The next thing we have to do is realize our need of God's supernatural power. And I want to say supernatural. Christianity is a religion of the supernatural. I once read through the book of Acts, examining it to see what would happen if I removed all reference to the manifestly supernatural. That's not just inward supernatural experiences, but things that are visible, that can be perceived by the senses. The book of Acts has 28 chapters. And at the end of that, I discovered not one chapter out of the 28 would be left intact if we eliminated the supernatural. And that's the only record we have in Scripture of how the church is intended to operate. We cannot operate effectively and accomplish the will of God solely by our own natural ability. We have to have the supernatural enabling of the Holy Spirit. And one main form of that enabling is the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We won't turn there, but let's look at just one statement of Paul which I think is important. It really summarizes what I'm saying. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's not a matter of theology. Theology has its place. It's not a matter of argument. It's not a matter of intellectual proof. It's the demonstration of the supernatural power of God. I'd like to look at the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, just one, two chapters back. The first five verses. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. <coughs> For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him you remember what we said about Galatians chapter 3? What does witchcraft obscure in the church? Jesus Christ crucified. Paul said, that's all I'm going to be interested in. Jesus Christ crucified. I, I was preaching just recently to a congregation which contained a large number of Jews in Jerusalem. And I pointed out to them that really the thing which is supremely esteemed amongst the Jewish people generally is knowledge. And here's a Jew who says, I determine not to know anything. <laughs> That's very unusual. Except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why? Paul says, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and much trembling. He wasn't an impressive speaker by any means. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit and of power. That was Paul's secret. Why did the Holy Spirit testify to his ministry with power? Because he focused on Jesus Christ crucified. You can bring all sorts of elegant sermons and theories and quote all sorts of doctors and people. The Holy Spirit is just bored. But when you begin to lift up Jesus crucified, he says, I'll bear testimony to that. And I believe that is the primary need of the church today, especially here, when we're in this country today, we're surrounded by Muslims. Do you realize that? Millions of Muslims. And there's nothing going to reach the Muslim mind but the demonstration of the supernatural. And we have an opportunity. Instead of having to go to them, they've come to us. We couldn't go to their nations and proclaim the gospel because we'd be put in prison or executed. But God has arranged for them to come here. What's the church doing about it? It's time the church rose up, said we will demonstrate to them that Jesus is alive. As I say sometimes, there's no extra charge for that. It isn't in my outline, but it happens to be true. <laughs> Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3 again for a moment. I just want to point out something there. 
Remember, this is all about the last days. That's the whole theme of this chapter. And he says in verse 8, 2 Timothy 3, verse 8, Now as Jannes and Jamres resisted Moses, Jannes and Jamres were the magicians of Egypt. They resisted Moses. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as was the folly of Jannes and Jamres. So what Paul is saying is, the contest that took place between Moses and the magicians of Egypt in the court of Pharaoh is going to be reenacted in these days between the servants of Jesus Christ and the practitioners of the occult. And it's not going to be settled by theology. It's a contest of power. Whose power is greater? And bear in mind the magicians of Egypt had a lot of power. The first three miracles that Moses did, they could repeat. They could turn their rods into snakes. They could turn water into blood. They could call up frogs out of the river. All of that was supernatural. But when they got beyond that and Moses went further, they said, this is the finger of God. Now we're out of our depth. I don't know if you've ever thought about Moses. I particularly like this, Moses and Aaron. They went there with the rod and Pharaoh said, show me what you can do, you guys. And so I think it was Aaron threw down the rod and it became a snake. Well, amazingly enough, Pharaoh wasn't much impressed. So he said to his magicians, can you do that? And they said, we can. They threw down their rods, they became snakes. But there was one thing that further that happened. Moses' snake ate up the snakes of the Egyptians. I don't know if you've ever thought about the scene that followed. The magicians walked out without any rods and Moses' rod was much thicker and stronger than the <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's going to be, you understand? It's going to be whose rod wins. I, if people disagree with me, I sometimes say, well, listen, don't let's argue. Let's throw down our rods and see which, which snake wins. <laughs> well, really, that's where it's at. It's not argument. It's demonstration. That's what's needed. And particularly in the gifts of the Spirit, we need the three revelatory gifts. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirit. The word of knowledge shows us Satan's operations, how he's working in the supernatural realm. The word of wisdom shows us how to counter his actions and defeat him. And discerning of spirit shows us when we're face to face with demonic power and activity. We desperately need those in the church today. 